Whereas knitting is great because I can have it in my lap, nobody sees it. And not that I'm trying to be like sneaky or anything on Zoom meetings. Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 73 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Wednesday, July 29th, 2020. If you know me, you know that I am pretty consistent with my schedule and it is quite rare for me not to record my podcast on Tuesdays. So yes, I am a little behind this week. I also feel like a bit of a mess because I didn't paint my nails on Sunday like I normally do. And that's another thing, if you're new here, I just, I love having my nails done and painted. And I usually do that every week, but I went a little like slower last week, took a little time off so that I could not have as many videos this week because I'm starting back to work. And now I'm just kind of having to like double hustle, but work starts tomorrow. It's all worth it. It's all fine. Just there is a heads up, but I have been knitting keeping my sanity here. So I do have some things to show you. I have lots of questions to answer. And since Sock Week is coming up, I figured I better go into the Sock Week thread on Ravelry. I always forget to look at that and answer any questions that I see there. So let's just dive right in. I'm not wearing any knitwear today because it is just way too hot in Texas. Plus we've been keeping our air pretty high. So like this is what's comfortable. I'm wearing a Target dress, I love these dresses. They're A-line and they are perfect for my body and they're flowy and comfy, but no knitwear um, today. In fact, I've washed and put away most of my knitwear now so that, I don't know, I've just kind of made the decision to put it away. I have a few things still out for like summer and fall, but not very much. Um, okay, let's do some finished objects. So I do have a small finished object this week. Um, this is not gonna display it very well. Here it is. <laughs> Let me put it on some yarn because that'll make it look a little better. I have made a crocheted yarn cozy. Here we go. That line bothers me sometimes, but I don't really know. What can you do? Okay, crocheted yarn cozy. This is a pattern that I am working on. It is not out yet. I have not put out for testers. I'm not ready to put out for testers because I want to have several different versions versions of this before I put out for testers. But it is working out really well. This is actually the second one that I've made. If you saw last week's episode, you would have seen me working on one in this color, and I'll tell you about that in just a second. Um, but I did start and finish this one since last week, and I really, really like it. I love the crocheted I-cord edge. Um, it is essentially a knitted, I cord with a crochet hook in one hand. You still need a knitting needle um, and it still mimics knitting, but you do it with a crochet hook and it's really, really cool. So I love that. And I think this is working out really, really well. So I've got this all typed up and I just need to take some time and work on different versions, which hopefully I can do sometime in August because I know y'all are waiting and I'm sorry, it just takes me so long to do patterns. So back to this one. So last week, that's my only finished object by the way. Last week I was working on the same thing but with this yarn and it was going so well. I had worked on it for you know, a couple weeks here and there off and on and then I was like, all right, I'm gonna finish it. I was sitting on a Zoom with my knit group and I was working on it and I was about to do, I was about to stop and see if I needed to do some like shaping and then do the i cord and i realized that my stitch count was off and i'm like how can my stitch count be off like come on it's so simple and i realized that at the very very beginning i had started with one too many stitches so the entire cozy was wrong <sighs> I was like, okay, no wonder it wasn't making a flat circle at the bottom. It was kind of like a little ripply, but it wasn't terrible, I guess, because it's fingering weight. So needless to say, I had to take the, or I chose to take the entire thing out, um, but I did start a new one. <laughs> it's so tiny and adorable when it starts. I don't know why I only did this much. I think it's because I was working on it during that knit night and I just stopped there. So 
definitely going to be working up more versions of this in different like stitches um, because I want to see what we can do. So be looking for that on the sometime future. I still have a DK weight version as well, but I haven't done any more samples in that. But that's my finished object for this week. Now, as far as whips go, it is completely a sock week. Technically, literally, it is sock week for me right here because I am in the middle of filming my sock week 2020 survival guide. And for that, this is a little bit of a spoiler, the video will be coming out on Tuesday, but I am attempting to knit a pair of socks because I have both of the sock week yarn. So sock week is a knit along. It's coming up really, really soon, August 9th through I think August 16th, Sunday to Sunday. And it is a challenge to knit or crochet one sock within those eight days, which is Shark Week on the Discovery Channel. Um, so it's, it's shark themed, but like a little bit. It's still fun if you don't like sharks. I don't even watch Shark Week. But anyway, I'll have the video linked um, so that you can go see like all the information on that. But I have um, both sponsor yarns, and so I wanted to knit both socks within those eight days and see if it was possible. You do not have to do two socks. One sock is enough to enter for prizes, but if you do make two socks, you can um, have a, another entry. If you make three socks, you can have another entry and so on. The rules are, will all be linked down below. Um, so I started two new socks this week and I have done what I feel like is a ton <laughs> because I've been working on them every single day. So here is one sock. This one is toe up. Um, for all of my socks that are for me, I do 60 stitches for like the foot and the leg. Um, and so this one is toe up. This one is actually getting really close to finish because I only did 40 rounds for the leg and then 15 rounds for the cuff. And you can find that information on my project page. I try to always put that on there. Um, for myself so when I do the second sock I don't get confused and then here's my other one again I start the marker is my daily progress which I actually haven't worked on this one today this was yesterday's um, so I started this one since last week and I feel like I've done a ton so this is like all my knitting well besides that cozy I did last week this is it but I feel like that's a ton even though it's not much to talk about <laughs> but I'm doing one cup down, one toe up. This one is striping. I'm going to have lots of little uh, tidbits. Sorry, I keep hitting the thing. I'm going to have lots of little tidbits about self-striping socks and like tips for why I do it cuff down and all of that in there. Um, but I do have still so much yarn left. And I know I'm not done with the sock yet, but I don't know. I'll weigh it later when I'm done. But I should be able to still knit some socks with sock week yarn during sock week i'm probably going to make shorty socks for my sister she loves um hand knit socks and she likes shorty socks which makes them super easy and her foot is really close to the same size as mine so they're pretty fast as well so i'll probably do that for her um during the week of sock week so i can be participating alongside you even though i'll have a pair two pairs of finished socks already I can get so I can get two pairs of socks usually out of 100 grams if I use um, contrasting heels, toes, and cuffs, um, and especially if I make shorty socks. So for me, sock yarn is like the gift that keeps on giving because I can make multiple projects out of it. Now there is a project I've been wanting to start, and I just haven't yet because I haven't had like the mental space, the the not physical space, but like the actual time to sit down and make a swatch because it's a garment. Um, but I would really like to make the, I think it's called Incendiary Tank by Stephanie Aaron. Um, if you haven't seen it, it is a crochet tank top with a an option to do a ruffle and it is super, super cute. A lot of y'all actually sent it to me like a picture of it and said that you could see me wearing that and I agree, I can see me wearing that too. So I have some yarn here. Let me take this out, one, so it's not so loud, and two, so you can see the color. So I have some yarn from another crochet top that I made a couple years ago that I took out. That's why it's all curly. And I think this would be a great ruffled tank top. It's um, a Madeline Tosh yarn. It's the right weight. And I have 
enough of it. I actually don't have enough. Well, I do here and here, but I don't really want like a dark tank top. So I think this would be my best option for what's in my stash right now, because I am trying to go use up my stash before um, purchasing things like to an extent. I will buy yarn this year, but this is not something that I want to buy yarn for quite yet. Um, so I think this is something that you could see me working on next week, maybe. Um, but I really need a project right now that's going to be simple because I'm going to be in lots of meetings all day long with work starting back. Um, and crochet for me is a little hard because I can't look away from it. I would need to be looking down. Whereas knitting is great because I can have it in my lap. Nobody sees it. And not that I'm trying to be like sneaky or anything on Zoom meetings. My like coworkers know that I knit, but the unique property of a Zoom meeting is that I can knit without being a distraction. I would not knit in a meeting at work, <laughs> like where people could see me sitting around the conference table. So that is a unique thing about working from home that I love, 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 besides just actually being at home. So I need a good project like that. I've been tempted to make the lounging tee or lounging top. I think it's a hohi pattern. Like all of my friends are making it or have made it. Um, and it's just a really simple top. But I also wanna make something fun like the crocheted ruffle, like incendiary tank. So I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I will probably make some kind of choice maybe on Friday night. Maybe I'll say Friday night because that'll be after my first few days of work. It'll be my little reward to cast on a new project. So yeah, maybe I'll make a decision then, come back to you next week. My socks should be finished by then, so I should have knitting time and crochet time, but yeah. Okay, I'll be back next week with something new. I can almost guarantee it. Okay, lots of fun questions this week. Um, I am looking here on the Ravelry thread where you can go to the Love and Stitches group and ask me questions. Now, I did wanna say, I know there is a like a lot of contention with Ravelry right now for many reasons, and there has been in the past too. Um, if you ever wanna ask a question for the podcast, Ravelry is not the only place. You can ask me here in the comments on YouTube. That's probably like the, it's not a bad place, but like it's the place that I'm likely, most likely not to see it just because sometimes things get like hidden and I can't see it. So you can ask on the YouTube comments, but just know if I don't answer, it's not because I'm ignoring you. I do try to look at all of them. So you can ask in the YouTube comments. You can email me nittynatty at gmail.com. That's the best place. That's a guarantee that I'm going to see that. And then um, you could also, you know, message me on Instagram. That's, a, that's another good place. So if you are not using Ravelry right now for any reason and you still want to ask questions, please use those different platforms and let me know your questions because I would love to answer them. Okay, so this one is from M. Stone or E.M. Stone. Um, this is Erin. She says, hi, Natalie. I just watched the sock drawer tour and it was so fun. I will link that video somewhere here. I would love to know what items you decided to part with on this last purge. I find it super interesting to see the behind the scenes like you did with your socks, but on a larger level. Okay, so recently I have been getting rid of things all over my house, not just in my yarn room and with my knitting, um, but I have gotten rid of quite a few finished items. Socks, scarves, not many socks, but scarves, like hats, even finished sweaters, because I knew that I was no longer going to wear them. And I am really edging towards minimalism in a lot of ways. Um, just having less stuff, honestly, I find that it makes me feel like I have more stuff, if that makes sense. When I have less, I feel like I see more. There's less distraction and clutter, and I really like use my items and appreciate them. So um, I have been knitting for a long time, and I have a lot of stuff that I've had for a long time. And just like your regular clothes, you change your style over time, you evolve what you like, the style itself changes. And so I used to feel like I couldn't get rid of anything that I had ever made. Um, and I really do think that comes from my mom, I love you mom, but she's always like, no, you need to keep it, you made it, you put so much time into it. And while that is 100% true, and if you wanna keep anything, you should. But for me, it's not like that. It's a, once I've made it, like 
that was part of its purpose was being a creative outlet for me. And now it is a garment and it's meant to be worn and used. Um, and if I'm not wearing or using it, it's time for it to go. So I don't feel that way about every project. There are some like my first socks that even though they're kind of ugly to me, I'm still keeping them right now. Um, but that's just, that's how I feel about them. And you may feel way the opposite or you may be somewhere in between and all of that is absolutely okay. Um, but yeah, so I did purge some of my garments um, and scarves and I haven't been showing that a lot just because um, I get messages a lot about like what I should do with my stuff when I'm getting rid of it. And that is totally fine. Like I really appreciate tips and, and everything like um, helpful tips. Like, did you know that um, you can donate these to like homeless shelters or uh, you know, a hospital will take blankets and, and stuff like that. I do really appreciate that. But sometimes I just need, like it's already enough mental energy to get rid of things. So I just need to like let them go and just take them to goodwill, which the horror I know, but I have decided to let them go and, it, and I need to just get rid of them. So I do my best not to throw anything in the trash. I don't think I've had any knitted items in the trash, but I do take a lot to goodwill and just have to let them go that way. But as I'm getting to have less and less stuff, I feel like, you know, I will continue this cycle, but I'll have less to get rid of and therefore more time and mental energy to be like, all right, I don't, I no longer use this shawl that I made. Could I do a giveaway? Could I give it to a friend? Could I, I don't know, give it to my mom um, and choose a different way to get rid of things. But right now I'm doing like mass stuff and I think that it's okay to just get rid of it. So anyway, I don't know if that really answered your question, but that is my process. Um, some of it I am sharing over on my um, lifestyle channel, this and that, when I, I did like a closet clean out, but actually I don't think I got rid of any knitting. I think I got rid of all the knitting in that sock drawer tour. So if you haven't seen that, it'll be linked um, and you can go check it out. It was a lot of fun. Okay, the pink stitch 26 says, do you take requests for podcasters to collab with in your series? I have one if you do. She's the graceful tangle on Ravelry and YouTube. So I, several months ago on Instagram did a little survey thing and I had people um, submit names of podcasters that they wanted to see me collaborate with. And when I collaborate with a podcaster, it's really simple. We just basically share about each other's podcasts and then I grab some questions from you guys on Instagram and both of us answer those questions. And we do it like on our regular podcasting days, but within a week of each other so that you have you know, somebody new to go watch. And then if you, Maybe you came from one of my collaborations, you were watching somebody else's channel and they talked about me and then you were able to find me that way. So it's really, really fun. Um, so yes, I am taking um, collaboration suggestions, but I still have tons of people on that original list that I am still reaching out to because I can only plan so many like at once. Um, so yeah, that's it. actually really interesting because it's kind of awkward to reach out to people that I don't know, like people that I already know, um, and I reach out to them. They're like, I mean, most of the time, yes, unless they have a reason it's pretty like, um, positive responses, but there are some people that I, I research and I look at, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're amazing. I would love to reach out to them. And then I'm like, they don't know me at all. <laughs> they don't know that I have a podcast and you know, you don't like getting those messages like, Hey, I can uh, help you get more followers, which is not what I say at all. But I'm like, you know, my name is Natalie. I have a podcast. Like I have been watching yours. I love it. And if you are interested in a collaboration, like let me know. And sometimes I don't get a response. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> That's okay, I will be okay. Um, but yeah, so I do know The Graceful Tangle. I love Amy Kate. Um, you should go check out her podcast. She is awesome. And if you suggest a podcaster to me, most likely I am like looking them up and adding them to my list and putting them kind of in a line to potentially collaborate with in the future. So sure, you can mention more to me. I am happy to put them on my list. Oblige, that's, what I, that's the word I was looking for.
Last question here, and then I'm gonna look at the sock week thread and see if I've missed anything for not checking it for a really long time. I'm sorry, I'm so terrible. Okay, this is from Amanda Da Da. <laughs> I think your name is probably Amanda. Okay, hey Natalie, I've been watching your podcast for a while and I love the enthusiasm you bring into every podcast. Thank you. I have two questions. One, do you ever get into a sort of writer's block with podcasting where you don't feel, uh, feel like filming? If so, what do you do to get out of that? Um, words are hard. So that was the first question. I'll go back to the second one. So I do sometimes not want to film. I do, I sometimes don't want to edit. I sometimes don't want to knit. <laughs> I think we all have those feelings and they're absolutely okay. Um, so for my podcast, I can share my experience lately has been um, a little more resistant. Obvious, I mean, honestly, not obviously, because I feel like I have been knitting and making the same things over and over. And I'm like, I wonder if they're like, she has not much to share. <laughs> so that has kind of made me feel like apprehensive and more hesitant when I'm recording my podcast. But you know what? I may feel that way before. I may feel that way setting up. But as soon as I sit down and start recording, it's like, I step into another space, like headspace, and it just feels really good to get to just chat about knitting and answer questions, and I always feel like so good after. So for me, I almost, feel, and, and not every week is like that, it's just been lately, because I'm like, wow, I made two socks, yay. <laughs> and maybe you don't feel that way, maybe it's in my head and I need to be like, all right, Natalie, it's okay, everyone, knits in different ways. Everyone knits the same thing over and over again, of course. Um, so for me, I feel like sometimes filming is a little bit like working out. You know it's good for you. Okay, well maybe you don't, know, you don't know it's good for you, but you you plan to do it. You have a plan in place. And before you're like, mm, I know that this is something I need to do, but I'm not excited. But then you are there, you're like in the class or you're running or whatever. And I guess this is where they're different because I'm having a great time right now. Whereas when I'm running, I'm not <laughs> having a great time. Um, but afterwards you get that like amazing feeling that you accomplished something and you did it and you're like, oh yeah, that's why I do that. So if you are feeling like, I don't know, you, that you don't have anything to talk about or you're just not really sure, maybe you're doubting yourself, just sit down and start, like show up every week consistently. That's what I do here for my podcast is some weeks I think, well, maybe I should start doing every other week. And then I'm like, no, if I do every other week, then I would have like two hour long podcasts because I talk so much. So I just sit down every week, it's different every week. You know, this is what it, this is my real life, my real knitting, my real crochet <laughs> and you just sit down and you do it every week consistently and it does, I think, will turn into something good and positive. Now, my second, her second question, I'm sorry, I made a second question, was you have mentioned how you would love to turn Nitty Natty into a full-time job. I was wondering, have you ever considered setting up a Patreon account and providing exclusive footage behind the scenes and discounts from there? And Amanda, I feel like you're in my head because that is something that I was thinking about just last week, um, is setting up something, a Patreon or something similar. I'm probably gonna put out some more, a kind of more like formal questionnaire and, and not even a formal questionnaire. I'll probably put a poll on Instagram to be honest. Um, but I am thinking about starting a Patreon account, but for me, it's really, really important that I don't, um, I don't make anything that I'm currently doing part of that because I feel like what I'm currently doing, the, the free content, my videos, um, my discounts that I offer from watching my videos for my patterns, um, what else, my live videos, like I don't wanna make that exclusive, but I do see the value of having a Patreon account and having and adding additional things that are exclusive. Um, and it would not be 
um, an expensive price or anything. So I'm probably going to have some kind of survey here in the next couple of weeks on like, okay, if you were um, choosing to support me for $5 a month, what kind of benefits would you want to see there? Or if it was $10 a month, what kinds of things would you expect to get? Like how many more videos would you want? Would you want to do um, a Zoom? I thought that one might be a really fun um, one to include in one of the tiers for Patreon is doing like a monthly live Zoom. Cause I think that's something people really want, yet it's hard to do with like 80 people, which is sometimes how many people come to the YouTube live. Um, so um, I am thinking about that. If you have any thoughts and want to share any great ideas like what I could be including in Patreon, feel free to put it in the comments or message me or anything, or you can just wait for me to ask on Instagram. Um, but I, it is really important to me that my current content stays free and available. Um, and so then I have to really think about what can I add on to what I'm already doing that's manageable um, but still beneficial. Um, I, think, I think the biggest thing about Patreon is that, at least for me, because I am a Patreon or patron to some people, is I know that it's not just about what I'm getting from them, but it's about me really liking what they're already giving me and then just choosing to support because I can. Um, there is never any shame in not being a patron. Is it patron or patron? I know Patreon is the website, but are you a patron? <laughs> I don't know. So I just want to make sure that I'm really, really intentional by ensuring everyone who's already here, like, it's okay if that's not for you. Um, but if you do want to, like, support, or um, I'm sorry, like, I guess support is the right word, support me, like, more than you already do just by coming and watching my videos and you have the means to to do that and you want to do that here's how you can and then there are some perks for that so yeah i need to just kind of think about that what i can do there's also um some things that i've just recently qualified for on youtube where i can provide like I can make like emojis that you guys can use during live videos and you can pay like a few dollars in order to use those. Is that something you guys would want to do? I know that's very popular on like Twitch. My husband streams on Twitch and um, of course I support him obviously and I pay my you know a little fee every month and I get to use special emojis um, but I didn't know if that's something that would be you know you guys would like here. So. I don't know, let me know. What would you like to see more of? And I can start integrating that into a Patreon. Um, the other thing is that I really would love to share more um, like t knitting tips. I miss doing giving like knitting help when I worked in a yarn store and I just don't know how to integrate that into like a Patreon, like how I would be able to um, provide like tailored support if you wanted to maybe every month I have like a specific live class and you can see what I'm doing and follow along with me or um, I give you like access to a separate um, email and you're able to ask like really intense knitting questions where you can actually send me like maybe we can get on like FaceTime and I can actually see what you're doing. I don't know. I have a lot of ideas and so I probably should be sharing more of them so that I can get your feedback right? <laughs> so yeah, I think that that's something I definitely want to get into. And I feel like I've talked enough about that. Let's go on to Sock Week. Okay, I'm looking through the Sock Week thread. And if you um, haven't, head over there because it is really fun to see all the enthusiastic knitters and yes, crocheters. I'm so excited to have people crocheting this year. Um, you can absolutely participate if you're crocheting a, a sock. In fact, you will probably have me like commenting on everything that you do because I can't wait to see crocheted socks. Um, but I don't see any questions, but I do see a lot of people that have received their yarn. They have wound it so that they're prepared and we are like more than a week out, which is hilarious. I love that. I love that you guys are so ready, but I wanted to share one post really quick because it kind of just warmed my heart um, and this is from Gracie's mother um, she said so excited for this knit along I taught my little girl age 10 to knit socks right before last year's cow 
We both participated last year and had so much fun. She was so excited that she was able to knit along. I surprised her and purchased us both a skein of Malia Made It Shark on Vacation yarn for this year's cal. She is so incredibly excited to do this cal again this year, and I am so excited slash happy that I get to share my love of knitting with my daughter. Thank you so much for doing this cal. I hope hoping this can be an annual tradition in my house. What? That is so cool. I had no idea that we had, I guess, somebody who was probably nine years old last year <laughs> knitting a sock and a mother-daughter team. I love that. Um, so if you want to go on to the thread and share um, what you're working on, remember you, you don't have to use um, the Sock Week yarn in order to participate. Um, actually, we are getting so close that if you do order the yarn, it is probably not going to make it to you in time for the knit along, or I'm sorry, make along. Um, but I believe that the dyers I'll have on links below might still have some skeins available for purchase. If you just like the color so much, you want to have it for later on, but you can um, work on something else while sock week is going on. But oh, that just warms my heart. It makes me so, so excited. I can only imagine if I started knitting that young, <laughs> how much knitting I would get done. But that is amazing um, that you have taught your daughter and I love that y'all get to share it together. Let's talk news. So I did have a new video kind of this week. It was on Sunday. Um, it was a live video. If you came or were able to come and chat with us, thank you for coming. It was so much fun. I. I'm always surprised by how fast those videos go. I feel like we're never gonna fill even 30 minutes and then before I know it, it's been an hour and it's just so much fun. So thank you so much if you came. We had a ton of people on Sunday. I was blown away um, chatting and talking. So that was really, really great. I do intend to do a YouTube Live once a month and an Instagram Live once a month. That is my goal, <laughs> but you will always find out about that on Instagram because that's where I can like get information out quickly to people. So make sure you watch for posts on there. And then of course, Sock Week is coming up August 9th and the survival guide is coming out next week on Tuesday. I'm going to make it a premiere. I need to see what my work schedule is so that I can coordinate the premiere of the video with my lunch time. So probably noon, but stay tuned. I will let you know closer to that time, because we're about a week out now. So I'll let you know a little bit closer to that time. Um, other than that, that's it. That's all that's going on. That's all that went on in the Nitty Natty world this week. I am designing, but nothing is close to being ready for testers. Um, honestly, I'm spending a lot of time just working on other stuff, and I will be back to designing hopefully very, very soon. I need to take another like design week for fall. That was really helpful earlier this year. Okay, so as far as life is going, life goes, I am starting work tomorrow. We are going to be, um, I'm, I'm a teacher if you don't know already, and we are going to be working from home. Now, I am not a classroom teacher. A lot of people ask me, what grade do you teach? So I don't teach a specific grade. I am a reading specialist or interventionist, and when we're at school, what I do is I work with like five groups, or I'm sorry, five kids at a time, and I usually go through eight or nine or 10 groups in a day. Um, and I just see those kids like every week. So, you know, if they're working on reading in the classroom, that would be the time I would come and get them. And then we would work on something that is like appropriate for their reading level, um, trying to get them caught back up to grade level. So that's what I do. I also work with um, dyslexic students, with teaching them the dyslexia program here in Texas. So that's my job. <laughs> um, that's what I do. So it'll be interesting. It was pretty like this spring when we were remote, um, the kids were working on the same program that we use at school. It's just a lot different when I can't be right there you know, monitoring them, but some kids really, really thrived and actually read a lot more when they were home on their own and their parents were on them, <laughs> which was great. And then of course, you know, everyone's home situation is different, so we're all adjusting. I'm hoping that since we have, you know, it's our second rodeo now, we got this. <laughs> I'm hoping that it will be a good virtual start. So we are gonna be virtual through Labor Day and then from there, 
we'll see i have no idea but i need to be ready to just like take things as they come which is why i've spent a lot of time getting like my house clean and some projects wrapped up and i need a simple knitting project ready <laughs> so that i just have something i can just knit on at the end of the day because my schedule is about to get insane um but yeah so that's what's going on in my life and then bringing me joy this week i am spending some time and some hard earned and saved money um, sprucing up a couple areas of our house um, i have been working to get my yarn room here set up which is also like part office um, so you will have seen that in my yarn room tour which i'll also have linked um, but i just got some accessories this week they should be arriving today some cute little like a riser to lift up my work computer and my other laptop so that they're at eye level because i already looked down at my phone so much and down at my knitting so much i need to be like this as much as i can um and then just like adorable little mouse pads and just things to make it look really nice and function well for me and then i've also um, i'm redecorating our bathrooms if you want to see that um then i think i will have that video out next wednesday on my other channel this and that so i'll have that one i'll have that channel down below but that's where i'll show all of like anything that's not knitting and crochet is going to be over there i do a lot of cleaning and organization but i'm decorating this week which is different for me i don't usually do that so that's a lot of fun but that's what's bringing me joy all right guys i think that's everything <gasps> get excited for sock week 2020 coming so soon and i will see you next week bye